Hey guys, uh, Friday night, uh, might actually be Saturday. Anyway, it's uh, after midnight, uh, insomnia is in full swing. So I figured I'd uh, do a uh, quick video here while I'm uh, <laughs> awake and uh, my mind's still working. Um, I uh, Well, first of all, uh, uh, BAME Farm, if you... Uh, I'm not sure if you're subscribed to my channel or not. I had commented when you did the uh, corn sheller video, uh, or the corn uh, binder video about the international toolbox, the original toolbox he had on there. This is the one I have, um, the flip-up lid. I And I don't even know where this came from. It has a wooden bottom. But, uh, yeah, you see these on eBay from anywhere from $15 to $60, depending on the condition. I don't know why it's uh, painted yellow either. But, uh, yeah, that's the uh, international toolbox. So, um... I, I often got a lot of questions from guys, uh, a lot of different farmers and uh, people uh, when I said I was a mechanic. Uh, a lot of guys ask, well, what, what uh, kind of tools do you like? What's your uh, favorite brand of tools? Um, what do you have in your toolbox? Uh, what's, the, what's the recommendation for um, mechanic tools? Well, back when I started out as a mechanic uh, in my early 20s, um, I was kind of stupid. <laughs> And by stupid, I mean uh, anybody that works at any kind of garage knows that uh, once a week there are these uh, trucks that like to stop in and they're filled with uh, wonderful uh, uh, Christmas wish uh, lift, list gifts, um, the Snap-on truck, uh, Matco truck, uh, Mac, uh, you name it, there's the uh, trucks that go around and uh, like to sell you tools at uh, a pretty... Uh, pretty expensive rate <laughs> so being in my early 20s and deciding I was going to be a mechanic for quite a few years I financed a snap-on toolbox uh, for almost four or five grand and being uh, that I was just starting out it was kind of a very dumb move on my part uh, to have forty dollars a week for the uh, snap-on guy every time he would stop um, just constantly, constantly being having to have forty dollars. It seemed like I was always giving him money just to pay off the stupid thing. Um, so I don't recommend anybody going into debt for anything. I'm a big believer in paying for cash, and uh, I had to learn the hard way in my twenties. I really did. I was really big in the financing at that time. Credit was accessible to everybody. Uh, I had my first uh, higher paying job as a mechanic, and as a result, I was given a lot of credit. Um, so anyway, the I don't have that box anymore. Um, when I was laid off in, oh, I forget what year it was. Anyway, I was laid off and decided I wasn't going to um, go back into that business. I had advertised it, and I actually sold it to a farmer. He had a, uh, I guess he had a fire on his farm, and it took out his uh, farm shop and everything they had in it. They had no tools or nothing. Nothing was left. So I had advertised it, and uh, he ended up buying it. Uh, I lost a little bit of money on it. It was in pretty nice shape. But anyway, I'm, I always get asked, what kind of tools do you like, and what tools are the best? Now, I... Uh, <laughs> A lot of people say with Snap-on and some of these real expensive tools that it's an investment. You're going to have them the rest of your life. Um, why not get the best? Uh, it's uh, only going to cost you money in, in the uh, long run if you don't. Um, and I guess if you're planning on to be a mechanic for the rest of your life or um, if you have the disposable income to spend on Snap-on tools... Uh, I mean, you're talking $100 for a 3 8 ratchet. So uh, I have bought uh, quite a few uh, Snap-on tools over the years. But a couple reasons why I won't ever buy any again. Um, uh, first of all, uh, being on a farm and out in the country, there, there's not as many people around. There are not as many eyes around as, as there is. Um, and you always have to worry about them getting stolen. E even at the garage, we had somebody break in to the uh, to the shop and uh, there was stuff missing and I started locking my toolbox every night uh, when I went home because you, you just you have so much invested in tools and tools uh, mechanic tools are pretty easy to uh, walk away um, so 
and it was all right locking the toolbox. It was too heavy for anybody to take, but um, uh, <laughs> yeah, you have to remember the key when you come to work the next day or you're locked out of your own toolbox, but just kind of a pain. But anyway, um, as far as the tools, I kind of have a, a, it's just a full on assortment. Um, and to be honest, I was buying um, Craftsman for a long time um, just because we had a Sears store uh, on my way to work. So, um, and a lot of the other guys had Craftsman tools and I'd have a box and at the end of the month or so, the box would be about half full of broken tools and I would make my run to Sears and exchange them and off you go again. Um, that was mainly the only reason I bought Craftsman tools was because they had a warranty on them. Um, there was no any, there wasn't much brand loyalty or preference. It was just the fact that you buy them once and you can break them as many times. They'll just keep uh, replacing them. So uh, anybody that's followed uh, Sears' uh, demise, uh, all the Sears stores within a 100 mile radius of us are closed down. <laughs> so I don't know what good the warranty is now if you have to drive over 100 miles to uh, warranty uh, some tools and it's uh I, I i stopped uh, buying them because there's no stores here i'm not going to buy them online if i can't warranty them so i have tons of craftsman stuff that i had bought over the years um vice grips little pliers um i showed you the filter wrenches hose these are nice these hose clamp pliers for like fuel lines to clamp a hose uh, engine uh, ring pliers uh, what else we got here? Yeah, the Craftsman wrenches. Um, and I'm sure everybody has uh, Craftsman tools just about everywhere in all their toolboxes. Uh, and I think a lot of guys bought them just because of the warranty. So for stuff like that, that's Sears with warranty, I would say Craftsman. And didn't have much to do with anything other than, like I had said, it was warranty. Now there's some oddballs mixed in here. That's a Mac ratchet. And I don't even know where it came from. Um... So that's how I ended up. Now there is some Chinese tools in here as well. These here, they don't get used very often. These um, uh, crow's foot wrenches and then the, the well, those are craftsmen, but these here, they, you don't use them that often. So from Snap-on, why on earth would I want to pay three, $400 for a set of something that's just going to sit in the box? Um, now, if you guys are brand loyal to Snap-on, hey, I don't have any problem. There's some Snap-on mixed in here. Um, there's some right, uh, right tool. There's some international harvester, um, just a little bit of everything. Uh, I do have the cheaper stuff that snap on sells. I would buy the pick sets and stuff. Um, the other thing is on the farm, you have, uh, snap on wrenches in your tractor toolboxes, uh, hundred dollars for a three eighths ratchet and it gets stolen or lost out in a field somewhere. Um, it, it uh, <laughs> it makes it harder to justify uh, buying them, but they, don't get me wrong. I'm not here to bash snap on. I uh, I do have a lot of uh, snap on that I bought over the years, but the majority is uh, craftsman. I'd say that would be the majority. Uh, like I said, there's some right. I don't know if any of you guys ever heard of right. Uh, got another another Mac ratchet here um, and uh, like I said I basically sold the whole uh, toolbox so this is what I'm down to and I have tools and boxes all over the place um, and it's a lot better to have them in smaller boxes that way I can take them out to the field but yeah we got these are basically all craftsmen there's some snap-on mixed in um, one trick that I learned from my great-uncle if you're working in a shop with other mechanics and you have similar tools to be able to differentiate your tools from everybody else this was his trick um, that he had showed me or he had uh, he didn't he he died in 72 so I guess he didn't show me I wasn't alive then but um, I had a lot of his old tools and uh, what he would do is take the grinder and on every single tool that he had he would grind three notches on it um, that way, if you were working with somebody else, um, your tools didn't get uh, mixed up. <laughs> so, yeah, it was a pretty neat trick that he had uh, showed me. Um, 
some of the things that were getting to be a pain to exchange at Sears, uh, some of the chisels and punches they don't always have in stock, I bought Snap-on. And uh, a lot of guys uh, like Snap-on because they're American made, and these are made in Spain, so <laughs> I don't know. And of course we have some more punches. Uh, these were some of my great uncle's tools. These are some valve uh, valve tools here. Um, tap and die sets. So as far as what I was getting into then near the end was uh, I'd basically just buy snap-on stuff that Sears wouldn't warranty. Um, tap and die sets were a big one. Uh, easy outs. Stuff like that that have a lot of little pieces that uh, they didn't have on the shelf at Sears to exchange. Um, that was kind of my kind of my strategy to uh, anything that Sears wouldn't warranty, I would buy Snap-on. So, uh, and like I said, with some of these picks here, now that one's broken, but um, Sears only sold these. It, it was kind of getting to be a pain near the end because Sears only sold these in four packs. So if you broke one pick, they weren't going to warranty the whole pack. Whereas Snap-on, hey, I broke the straight pick. You give it to him and he exchanges it, so... Um, yeah, that's uh, what got me by all those years. And then what I did was uh, put together a set of toolboxes here. This one is all um, SAE uh, tools, and this one is all metric. And a lot of times if the service truck was uh, in use and I was at work, I'd keep these on my pickup. And I could use one of the uh, the pickup trucks that we had to go out on the road. So, but yeah, that's uh, just kind of my thoughts on tools. I really don't have any brand loyalty. Um, and as a matter of fact, now that I'm farming and uh, doing less mechanic work, I have, been, <laughs> I have been buying a lot more Chinese stuff just because you know what the life on a farm with the tools are. Um, they could get lost easy. Uh, they can get uh, stolen, any number of things. Yeah, these are blue point which was, I guess, was an offshoot. And, and the, the snap-on, I wanted a set of uh, stubby ratchet wrenches um, just because they were neat. They were they came in handy a lot. And uh, the snap-on set was ridiculous. So they did have blue point ones that were still warrantied. Um, and like I say, we have uh, Tecton. So that's a cheaper brand. That's China, Chinese. Um, for stuff I don't use that often. Um, electrical stuff, again craftsman uh, multimeters and i had bought good multimeters at one time i had a, a fluke meter and i was diagnosing something on the tractor and i pushed a clutch pedal in to check a safety switch and the meter was under the clutch pedal and i ended up cracking the screen and after that i said i'm never buying an expensive meat multimeter again so this is just a gb uh, this is the free harbor freight one that they give you when you bring in a coupon <laughs> So, there's a little bit of Milwaukee. Um, it's just basically everything. Like I say, I have no particular favorite brand. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's what got me through all the years. And uh, I'd say this is only about half of what I, <laughs> what I have in the tool collection. So, anyway, like I say, up late, can't sleep. Figured I'd make a video. Anybody has any questions or uh, let me know what kind of tools you guys use out on the farm. So thanks for watching.